have in previous meetings. I do have copies of this statement for anybody that would like it. Um, I print these things off every time before the meeting, and I think I've only had like two people take them, so I think I made 20. would love to have some folks take them if, if you'd like to have them. But I'm going to read the statement that we put together as a board uh, over the weekend and throughout the day today, uh, multiple reiterations of it. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and read that for you now. So, Beaverton Rural Schools Board of Education, Statement November 12, 2012. The Beaverton Rural Schools Board of Education is satisfied that another step in the process of its evaluation of the James Emery case is now complete. At its meeting on November 5th, the board was able to complete its review and corresponding action pertaining to BRS administrators' actions as detailed in the police investigative report. As stated at that time, the board has decided to place letters of thanks and personnel files for the appropriate and cooperative action of two of our administrators, Jeff Budge and Joe Pasolato. The board also decided to place a letter of reprimand in Mike Bassage's file. While the board feels that Mr. Bassage acted inappropriately in violating the requirement of confidentiality, it does not appear it was done for any purpose of interfering with the investigation, but was done out of misplaced trust in a friend. In all other aspects of the investigation by the police and the board, he did cooperate and has apologized for his mistake. Regarding the actions of Superintendent Greg Paxton, the prosecuting attorney determined not to file any charges involving him. Certain aspects of the report, however, caused the board concern and will be utilized as part of the annual evaluation of his performance and leadership skills. We will continue to review these concerns through the superintendent's evaluation process consistent with board policy. In the interest of providing the proper context for our decision-making process for those in the community who don't have access to the same information as members of the board, we wish to remind staff, parents, and citizens of a few things. From a prosecution perspective, the outcome of the police investigation is that Mr. Emery was charged. Based on the factual information that comprises the report in its current state, no other criminal charges have been filed. There is no evidence that any Beaverton employee were directly involved in this, invest in this disgusting behavior, nor were any Beaverton students involved. While the details documented in this report trigger understandable anger and revulsion, it is the board's legal and ethical responsibility to deal in facts not emotions. Appearance, hearsay, and rumors do not in any way meet the appropriate standards necessary in a proper decision-making process of this magnitude. Five of the seven members are parents of children attending BRS. All seven are parents. To presume we aren't striving at all times to achieve the best possible outcome for kids is a grievous misjudgment. No matter how much we would all like this to be a sprint, the legal, ethical, and fiscal reality is this is a marathon. Our desire to put this ugliness behind us is surpassed only by our commitment to doing it correctly, not just for today, but for the long term. The board will continue to closely, completely, and accurately evaluate the operations of the district and focus on providing guidance to run the best possible district. <clears throat> While our review of the situation is not complete, we feel that we are moving toward an end point. We want this all behind us, but will in no way sacrifice thoroughness for expediency. The board is truly appreciative for the continued patience of those who realize that while the emotional response to the situation is black and white, the practical, responsible process is anything but. We will see this chapter of our district through to its appropriate end, and we will continue to strive to build Beaverton Rural Schools into a district we can all be proud of. Thank you very much. <coughs> I appreciate everybody coming. Anything else relative to communications or expressions from the public? Okay, with that, because we do... Hey, Adam. Hey. Oh, sure. Mrs. Smith? Sharon Smith, 4357849. What I would suggest... You did an excellent job reading that position. But what has contributed to everyone being here 
is the lack of communication that has occurred. Every board member should have been notified early on by your superintendent. You all have jobs. You are not in the building. You are not here on a daily basis. You are elected and you don't get paid much. You depend on the communication from your superintendent, from your administrators. You also have to accept communication that comes from concerned citizens in this district. I would suggest that you better have a better open communication lines so that you will be aware if there is a potential problem that you don't have to read it in the paper or you don't have to get a police report. And whatever it is that you are going to do to open those lines of communication, you better get them open and you better make sure that everybody in this room and everybody in this community understands how they can communicate with you. That's all I have.